Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and here we go, my demolition expert build. All type of explosives that you can use, it's optimized for those and we'll go step by step what I choose and why. Let's start from a special distribution, those are my base special points as you can see in here. On top of that I have two legendary pair cards boosting special points, although to be absolutely honest, this build is quite light on required legendary perks. I will show you exactly what you can skip if your level is lower than mine. Then let's jump in. Those are my legendary perks and maybe I will start from the most important. Electric absorption, that's the first I would recommend to max out for this build. Second one, Funky Dots, I would recommend to take at least one rank of that. It's very useful to reduce your accidental deaths. And after that, you're pretty much free to go. Whatever you need at the moment. I have Legendary Intelligence, Legendary Endurance to boost my special. I have Sizzling Style to reduce damage that I take from fire. And I have Power Armor Reboot. In case I will somehow die, although I notice I'm not really dying with this build, then this can save. Then I found it useful for this particular build, although if you want to change something, feel free to do so. Some other good options for this build. Ammo Factor, if for example you plan to craft those explosive ammo. Master Infiltrator, if you are lazy like me on my main build. Or taking one for the team if you are expecting to tank damage for your teammates. Now, about the regular perks, and first maybe I will do something different. I will tell you what you can drop if you don't have this extra special under your legendary perks yet. Then you can drop blocker, because most likely enemies will not be able to get close enough to you to actually hit you. You can drop revenant, as this is only used occasionally. You can drop Action Boy, that's just a comfort perk, I will call it. And you can drop Mysterious Savior and just try not to die. And now what else is in here and why? Traveling Pharmacy, we need to carry at least some 8 with us. Lock and Load, that's incredibly important for explosive launchers as they reload slowly and do not hold too much ammo. Then that's a key perk. Ordnance Express, yeah, there's no other way you'll be able to carry all the stuff you need to blow stuff up. Uh, and Blocker, this is used occasionally when enemies actually somehow get to you. This reduces damage greatly. Under Perception, we have Fire in the Hole, very useful for grenades, especially if you are aiming into the window with your grenade, then this will help you actually hit the window and not your feet. And Grenadier, that is self-explanatory. All the launchers will have so much higher radius and grenades too. Under Endurance, we have Life Giver for extra survivability, Fireproof, of course, here is super important as you don't want to blow up yourself and as well fire resistance is helpful too. Radical for extra carry weight mainly and Revenant occasional damage boost, especially if you play on the team and you will go down intentionally. Under Charisma we have Party Boy. This one is very important if you want to have this crazy good accuracy in VATS thanks to Sweetwater Special Blend. Strength in Numbers. Mutations are stronger, tenderizer for even more damage. Under intelligence, first aid, very handy. Ned rage, this one is a must. Crazy boost for your grenades and launchers. Stabilized, all the launchers, even though they do not benefit from heavy gunner perk, they do benefit from stabilized, then it's here. Demolition experts, I think that's self-exploratory with this build, and Scrapper to help you out with resources. Under Agility, Action Boy, so I said that's a comfort perk, action points will regenerate faster, and Adrenaline, max out in this case because there is not too much bonuses that can boost explosive damage, and Adrenaline is one of those. Under Luck, we have Bloody Mess, more damage with explosions, and more damage with explosions mean less explosives you need to use, and therefore you are better off. 
Saving on resources. Class freak. We have a bunch of mutations I will show you, that's why class freak. Star genes to keep those mutations and mysterious savior. If occasionally you'll somehow go down, there is a good chance mysterious savior will just pick you up. And here I want to go back for a legendary perks, especially detonation contagion, because this seems really cool. Like you, you could use it with this build. Unfortunately, I was doing some testing and even though it's a cool perk, I cannot find a situation when this perk will be helpful. When enemies are already dead and then their body explodes, there's like no benefits to that. I don't know what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to help. I was trying to run with this and with far flank fireworks. It's all kind of useless from my experience. That's why it's not included. Now, quick look on the mutations. This is basically what I'm using my standard setup. And just quickly to tell you what and why. Adrenaline reaction, more damage, bird bones, more agility, eagle eyes, more accuracy in vats, egghead, more experience, empath, less damage taken as long as you have at least one teammate, herbivore, great bonuses, from veggies, health mentality, extra special on the group, marsupial, jump height, scaly skin, extra resistance, almost free, and speed demon, faster reload and movement speed. Now about the gear. And here you can notice some surprising items, like I have two knives, one is instigating, one is junkies. I'm currently addicted to a bunch of chems in order to be able to use junkies, but instigating is even more important. What you should know, instigating effect, if I equip this knife, will apply to my grenades, to my throwable grenade. That's why I have two knives. If I want to blow enemies that are at full health, I will equip instigating knife. Otherwise, I will equip junkies knife because junkies effect as well applies to all your grenades. Anti-armor will apply too, Unfortunately, in the case of anti-armor, it's weaker than junkies or instigating applied to grenades, then those are my choices. After that, we have two-shot broadsider. You are able to see it in action when I recorded a trailer for this build, but generally this weapon is used only during daily ops on this build. Only during daily ops because cannonballs are very heavy and what I do I always first stand next to my ammo exchange machine and then join daily op. After gathering on the cannonballs and exiting daily op, I will be next to the machine and I will just sell them. That's why Broadsider is here. And trust me, if you'll be using Broadsider every time for daily op, you would like to use other weapons too. Then next I have two shot Hellstorm missile launcher. And this is a really cool one. I mean, it's a cool effect. It's freezing everything. It's not very powerful. I will show you in a moment, but mainly for a cool factor it's in here and to waste some messiah that I will pick up. After that, from more useful weapons, very cool and useful two shot fat man. It can basically carpet bomb quite a huge area and kill everything in there. That's why it's so cool. I have it with Murph, although the classic one is really cool too. Then whatever you want, those mini nukes will be, will be fun to use. And main weapon for this build, two shot grenade launcher. That's the true killer because insane damage, high range, great VATS accuracy, very good everyday weapon. And grenades are like the cheapest from explosive type of ammo. Then that's it. That's why it's in here. And of course, heavy barrel to boost the damage and two shot legendary effect as on other weapons. This one is actually only two shot as other two are not very useful. But if you are looking for launchers, two shot is what you actually want. Next we have armor and I'm using Hellcat power armor full set of assassin. Although I will tell you in here that if you don't have it, like don't have Hellcat Assassin, you can try to trade for some T-45 or Raider Power Armor Assassin pieces, because those are quite widely available and you have best chance to complete your set early. And it doesn't really matter what type of power armor you have 
All that's matter is to have assassin. The second star, the third star, it doesn't matter. All you want is set of assassin and without any pieces that will heal ra your radiation. That's the only important thing. Then full set of assassin, that's what you want. Nothing else really needed at Torza, of course, with emergency protocols to avoid taking basically like any damage. About the food items, this category is supposed to be mostly empty because we don't have enough carry weight to carry a lot of food. Therefore, I recommend just freshly and easily prepared at your camp corn soup, mute fruit juice, tato juice and sweet water special blend for VAT's accuracy. That's everything. You don't really need to carry any other type of food or drink. And now, time for some action. Let's go. First, we are starting from grenades. We'll be using famous Nuka grenade for a nuclear solution when needed. And of course, for the grenades, instigating knife will be equipped. Let's pop one Berimentas to see if ghouls are inside the golf club. I think they are there. Yep, ghouls are in the golf club and that's why you need that. You can see exactly where the grenade is going. And that was one and second one in here. And that should be it. Yep, that, that's the golf club cleared. There is no need to go inside unless you have like one straggler. Yeah, this one was legendary. That's how she survived. Legendaries tend to be able to somehow survive way better than other enemies, I think. They have some tricks up their sleeves. And uh, that's, that's everything. Yep. Every other ghoul was already dead and he actually dropped a grenade launcher to star, but we don't need it. That's, that's how you use grenade. Two grenades, golf club, clear it. Okay, what else we have on the list? Let's try this fat man on some super mutants. Okay, we have some super mutants uh, spawn low level. Sometimes it happens, they spawn at level 50. But look at this bombardment. <laughs> see, you, you will not see anything. Then you can look around after dropping bombs to see what survived. Okay, cannot see a thing. They still survived. Okay, direct hit. Aim for the feet. Yep. Those are down. <laughs> it's overkill. Unfortunately, Fatman, unlike the Nuka Grenade, if the Super Mutant is behind some kind of a cover, he will not get killed. That's the problem. But good news is you can shoot directly at your feet and it will be still fine. You will not kill yourself. Because of assassin set. That's why you need assassin power armor. And you go down too. And now let me demonstrate two shot grenade launcher. That's the weapon we'll be using whenever we want to get Scorch Beast down. And of course it's really good on Scorch too. So you can see if you fire it in VATS, the radius is insane. <laughs> Basically put down waves of enemies with each shot and they fly around Okay, okay Scorch Beast. Can you can you came closer? Okay, let's try And even in power armor you can see that I can fire multiple grenades and that's it I fired way more than it was required to put her down I see some Scorch over there. Did I hit him? Ah, got him. You don't need to be very accurate. Oh, another one. Take it. And as you can see, I can shoot my leg directly. Nothing will harm me. This will not harm me. Nothing else. Only thing that you need to be careful about. If you put a cryomod or hellstorm missile launcher, it can harm. Look, you see? The cryo portion of explosion is doing damage to me and freezing me. Then I'm, I'm getting slow if I hit myself with this missile launcher. Good thing about missile launcher is it's fully automatic. If I aim and hold the trigger, it will fire all the missile, but you can see how little damage it actually does. And unfortunately, like multiple missile to kill a robot that's level 50, that's not impressive. 
But it has this freezing effect if you want to use it on boss and help your teammates a little bit. Just don't hit yourself. That's the only rule in here. And probably there are some scorch in there. Can we hit them with Fatman from there? Is it enough range or not? Too far. Fortunately, we could with normal Fatman, but with this Smurf version, it's not going very far. I somehow fired twice. I don't know how, but okay. We didn't hit anything though. That's the problem. This one is only good if you actually run close and then you shoot directly under your feet. That, that's how you use the mirror fatman with this build. Hey there. The downside, barely anything you can see after that. But it's working. You can use it like that. And your friends will be probably surprised. How are you using that and not dying? <laughs> so you are taking absolutely zero damage from your own explosions. Then you are not dying. And if you are thinking how to get enough of explosive ammo to feed all of that, the main answer is ammo exchanger machine. Because you just farm cannonballs in daily ops and exchange it for whatever other explosive ammo you need as crafting of these ammo types is very expensive otherwise, then I prefer to just use daily ops to farm the cannonballs and then buy those mini nukes and messiah that you need. And I think I showed you everything that you need to know about this build. If you still have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. The base weapon is of course two shot grenade launcher. Everything needs to be two shot for this build. That's like a mask apart from knives that are instigating and junkies. Everything else, two shot, two shot, two shot. And that's everything I have to tell you. But now as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.